Hi everyone, I'm Selena from selenashapland.com and I thought I'd make a, a quick video on uh, dream interpretation and uh, creativity because I have a keen interest in dream interpretation and in creative writing as well as art and uh, I thought maybe you know they could go together and we could just do a little bit of it. Okay, so let's get started and start talking about dream interpretation, writing, a bit of creativity and how to use your dreams to yeah, help you with your writing and your artwork as well. So, you know those sorts of dreams that you have that are visceral, that you remember the next day. You know, lots we all dream, we don't always remember that we dream, but sometimes you have those dreams that just they just won't leave us and we feel like they've got something very important for us to learn about or to understand and they're the kinds of dreams that I think are important for the in the daily life and helping you to understand where you're at and where you're what you're learning as a human being and where you're going and doing things like that. I've found so, that the best way to do that is to have the dream and and then just really the minute that I wake up I have a dream journal and I write it down. It's a practice that you need to get into if you want to continue or if you want to learn to do dream interpretation is have a practice, a daily practice, okay, every morning, wake up, first thoughts go down on the page, on the paper, and then just, you know, what, write exactly what happened, write down, you know, the images that you saw, the feelings that you had, the emotions that you, you know, the feelings and the emotions that you experienced, think about what, what was the color of the dream, was it in black and white, was it color, was it really truly vivid, um, did the did it have animals in it was it about teeth i mean lots of people dream about teeth for me when i'm afraid when i've got a lot of fear going on in my life i will dream about um uh, crocodiles so crocs are a very frightening creature for me so whenever i'm having something quite difficult going that i'm going through quite something quite difficult in life I often have this symbolic croc come into my dreams and he, he really has a message for me. Uh, so you might find patterns in your dreams. So things about explore the dream, write down what, what the dream was, write down the colors, write down the emotions, write down the senses. So what did you smell? What did you taste? What did you hear? What did you feel? Um, <clears throat> Yeah, I think that's all the senses. Uh, just every sense you can think of. Just write down everything. And then take a moment and re just really look at what it is that you wrote. Because if you're anything like me, you'll be feeling a lot of emotions when you're writing down these these particular dreams. They're very important uh, to, for me in particular, for directing me through life. So once they're all written down and I've got that emotion down, I start breaking out the... Uh, the symbols and so, this is where consistent dream interpretation comes into its own in that you consistently have it if you have a dream you consistently write it down and oh after a while you start to create your own dream journal dictionary and that's how i know that a croc is a very frightening um symbol for me in dreams I, i've dreamt about snakes massive anaconda snakes you know coming to swallow me to take me to take my dog and you yeah it could just be fears being um dealt with but when i break down the symbol if you think about a snake a snake goes through a transition when it when it breaks out of its old skin and comes into its new new life so there's a real change cycle of patterns there and you need to think a little bit more symbolically about what it is that you're interpreting so these are the sorts of things you need to think about when you're actually doing your dream interpretation how close was the snake how close was was I running away or were you running away from the, the moment or were you stepping into it was it one of those um, dreams where you really love to be with somebody that you're you know you kind of like have a real connection with and was there filled with love so you write that down and you look at the patterns and you look at the emotions and you start to build up your dream journal for creating a dictionary of terms that will really give you a sense of who you are and what what you're going through and then you look at your your current life pattern and you think how 
is this dream connected to my everyday reality because I believe that dreams really are about processing your experiences sometimes we have very vivid spiritual dreams that are uh, beyond beyond just uh, interpreting our daily lives and I think those are the ones that truly stay with you for years like you can revisit that experience in your waking moments years and years and years later and there'll be messages and that sort of stuff for you so just write all those down. I, I know sometimes I write them down and I then forget about them. I've written them down. I've looked my looked at my uh, symbols and then I move on and in my life and then it's like, oh my lordy lordy, that is amazing because that spider that I, I read about was at exactly the time that I was going through a sense where I had to figure out a creative knot in my story, for example. You know, there's so much symbology. And especially if you want to be a creative writer or if you're an artist as well, exploring symbology really, really helps to open you up to your creativity. And dreams are a great way of um, building that almost neural pathway in your brain to express your hidden creativity. So it's another pathway to getting to your creative uh, expression in life. Um, in this dream, there was this chestnut, magnificent chestnut horse, and he was being um, driven over a... Um, curved uh, cobblestone bridge and the guy on the back was whipping him and um, every time he whipped him the the horse like leapt into the into the into the air and and I was a few levels above it watching down from like this glass encased um, room and um, the horse just kept coming up and as it did it would its hoof would slam against the the glass and make it shudder and uh you know it just really made me have to it, it startled me in the dream if i make sense if that makes sense I, it really startled me <clears throat> so it was it was whinnying and it was jumping and the carriage was holding the horse back down and um but he leapt he would leap as far forward as he could but he would also go up and um, I don't know if it was male or female, but I'm calling it male. And each time he, he did that, um, I could see him trying to connect with me and he was crying out for freedom and it was a visceral thing. I could really feel it. It was so, it was in my heart and in my belly, you know, in my gut. And I just, I could sense that desperation to get out of his um out of the control that was happening to him on, on a daily basis. Um, so, but I couldn't help him. I was as stuck and as powerless at that point as what he was. And this is the feelings that I was getting from my dream. These are the emotions that I was going through. And um, it was an incredibly brightly um, colored dream. The emotions were were fear and the, the absolute visceral need to be free. It was totally palpable. Um, I watched eventually and, and the horse, it, it tugged and tugged and, and broke free of the carriage and the carriage tumbled over the side of the cobblestone bridge. And when it smacked into the ground, the really harsh, horrible man that was, you know, whipping him and whipping him to the point where there was like blood coming out of the, the, the wounds of this poor, poor horse's hide. The man had become trapped underneath the carriage that had um, broken off the horse, you know, tethering the horse. And um, it was a human made, man made vehicle uh, meant to, to harness the horse, if you know what I mean. And uh, anyway, he wasn't, this man wasn't able to get help. Uh, he wasn't able to get out of, from underneath the carriage without help. And, uh, but nobody kind of wants to help somebody like that, do they? They don't want. To step in and help somebody who causes harm to another being well at least not in my dream and and I probably find that difficult in life at, at times to to come to terms with um, people harming other people or our, our animals it's not in my book it's not not good anyhow anyway um, the, at, at the point where the horse had had taken off and the, the the carriage was sitting on the guy and nobody was really wanting to go and help him the dream ended and I woke up and I knew I had to write it down because it was truly fresh in my mind. And for me, you know, 
Dreams have layers and they're rich with subconscious symbolism and archetypes that you know connect me to my everyday and connect me to my, my creativity and connect me to my spirituality or whatever you want to term that, something that's greater than myself. And, and for me, it's very much narrative, a story. So I do get fragments of um, uh, dreams, but I also do sometimes have dreams like this, which are like holistic and they've got huge, strong messages for me um, and, and quite reflective of where I was at the time when I had the dream, which was, and by that I mean where I was in my life at the time that I had my dream. And then I was struggling, wanting to become a writer and um, you know move my craft forward, uh, you know find a way to move eventually out of administration and into a um, full time writing uh, environment. And uh, you know it's it was just I was dealing with a lot of frustration and at the time anxiety and depression. You know I was going through a pretty bad patch and this. This dream it taught me something about myself and that we you know in they say that you know everybody is every aspect of it, their dream so you are the aspects of your dream you are the symbolism and you are the fear that sort of stuff and um, I I know it was I was the horse and I was kind of trying to wake myself up in the dream. I know I was the person stuck behind the glass uh, panels. I know I was the guy whipping the horse, as hor horrifying as that feels to me. You can't grow without understanding your dark and your light sides. And I don't think in, in creativity you can grow your creativity without understanding the dark aspects of, of uh, say characters and uh, you know themes and conflicts and you can't grow it unless you see the light aspects as well so anyway moving forward I I was sitting in this course at Brisbane Writers Workshop run by Lauren Daniels and the brilliant editors over there and we were talking about dreams and all these sorts of things and I just admitted that I had had this dream and I kind of told them about that and then we had this great discussion about how dreams can help open your creativity and I was stunned at how much I enjoyed that concept and so I then you know my dream interpretation sort of deepened and developed further because now when I when I write down my dreams not only do I look at them for how I am, where I am in my life, but I also look at them from the perspective of, well, how are they adding to my creativity and what could I use if I needed to Because in my, in my stories? Because I believe that writing is a lot like going into a dream state. You're writing... You're writing different perspectives. You, you know, you're writing the bad guys and what they're doing, and you're writing the good guys and what they're doing, and you're writing everybody in between, the sage and the child or whatever, you know, whatever you got in your story. You need to know and understand and interpret and understand human behaviour, and you need to understand a little bit more about symbology. Well, for me, I, that's what I think. So I, I hope that me going through this uh, dream interpretation. And I'm sharing this one dream with you helps you to think about the way that you uh, maybe approach dreams, maybe the way you approach writing, maybe the way that you approach creative art, um, and harness your dreams to enrich your characters and maybe enrich your plot. Uh, you know, I'm a big fan. I love writing. I love creative writing. I'm still working on my own fiction, making incremental steps towards publication, and. Um, enjoying developing my stories but writing about my dreams helps me to open up as a person and helps me to be, uh, open up as a creative anyway that's it uh, thank you so much for watching I uh, hope you got something out of this little video and if you've enjoyed it please feel free to subscribe to my youtube channel yeah nice to talk to you about dreams and creativity have a great day. Happy writing, happy creativity, happy dream to interpretation.